Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about the one thing that I learned that when I understood, I stopped drinking. I no longer wanted to drink again. And if you're on your journey right now to that great quality of life without alcohol, this concept, this idea is gonna completely change your worldview. It's gonna change the way that you view alcohol. You've really gotta understand this concept because this was the concept that as soon as I got a grip of it, as soon as I started understanding the things that I'm gonna share with you in this video, I just didn't wanna drink anymore. And I mean that. I know that might sound hard to believe right now, but I don't want to drink. It's not that I have to exercise willpower. It's not that I have to look at other drinkers and think, damn, I wish I could drink. You know, I, I don't feel like that anymore. I have zero desire to put poison in my mouth anymore. And it didn't used to be like that. And the concept that we're gonna talk about in this video is gonna really, really radically help you on your journey. So. I'm so excited to share this with you. I've had, a, I've had a really nice weekend. I feel really recharged. It's Monday morning here. I'm fresh, I'm ready to make this video for you guys. It's gonna be absolutely awesome. And just before I get into it, I, I wanna just say one thing, right? Now, back when I was on my journey to actually finding a solution to my drinking problem, back when I was trying all these different methods and, and just literally I would have done anything, right? The big thing that actually stopped me on this journey was this overwhelming sense of fear, right? I'm not gonna lie. Back when uh, I was looking for a solution, I would never have told you that I'm afraid, but now I can look back at it and look at these things objectively. I was afraid, right? I had this constant sense of doom, this constant sense of fear that life just wouldn't look quite the same without alcohol again. You know, I thought that I'd have to go to these events, to these barbecues, to these parties, to these sporting events, to whatever. And if I couldn't drink at those events, then for some reason, I was afraid. I was afraid that I'd be missing out. I was afraid that I'd be going to these events and, and looking around and thinking, why am I the odd one out? And I just wanna say this before we get into the content, that you have got nothing to fear on this journey, right? Absolutely nothing to fear. You've got nothing to fear. There's nothing to be afraid of. And it's all about changing your worldview. It's all about changing the way that you view alcohol. I used to view alcohol as something that was going to give me so much value in my life. I looked at alcohol and I thought, this is something that you know, brings me so much joy, so much pleasure. Sure, there was destruction, but I was afraid to get rid of it because I had this completely wrong worldview when it came to alcohol. And it was when I kind of flipped that upside down on its head. And I started to say, this is BS. This is not true. That's when everything changed. That's when I got to this place now where I'm sober clear. And I just feel that I don't even want to drink. I don't even want to drink. I, I never look in the past and think, damn, I should have drank more. I, do, I don't think like that. I think in a completely different way. I think about the future now. And the concept that we're going to be talking about in this video, you know, I think it's going to blow you away. I think you're going to absolutely love it, right? You, you know you've got those uh, beer goggles. You put the beer goggles in and, and ugly people start to look beautiful again and so on. This is going to be the opposite of beer goggles, right? This is going to be like putting goggles on and you've got this crystal clear vision all of a sudden. And I wanna say one more thing, just before we get into it, just one last point. But it's 100% possible for you to become a happy non-drinker. And I don't mean, when I say a happy non-drinker, the way that I feel about alcohol, that is a repeatable process that other people can go through, right? And I know that for a fact, because I've been taking people through it, through a coaching program, right? and they feel the exact same way as me. It's a repeatable process. It's entirely possible that you can stop drinking and not feel miserable about the process, not to feel like you're giving something up, not to feel like, damn, why have I, why have I, you know, what's the point? You don't feel like that, you feel the opposite. You feel like, ah, it's done, I'm finished. I can move on with my life and get on with the next thing. That is entirely possible for you. So I wanna start talking about this concept now because I'm, 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 I'm blobbing on. But what I'm gonna be talking about is the conditioning, right? Like this, this is gonna be quite uncomfortable for some of you guys watching this. This is, a, this is a, a small part of the Sober Clear program. This is like an area that we actually dive very deep into. And I'm gonna be diving it deep into it today because I really want you guys to understand it because it's one of the most important things to understand. And for a lot of you guys, it's gonna be very uncomfortable, right? You're gonna be listening to this and you're gonna be thinking, fuck, like, I, excuse my language, but you're gonna be looking and thinking, how have I been falling for this for such a long time? And for some of you guys, you're probably gonna turn the video off. You're probably not even gonna watch it. You're probably gonna watch it and think, I'm just too uncomfortable. I, don't, I just don't feel good. I feel like I'm an idiot. I feel like I'm a failure. How could I have been falling for this stuff? 
But don't worry about it, right? Because everybody is falling for it. Not just you, not just me. I fell for it. All the people that I work with in the program have fallen for it. You have fallen for it. Everybody has fallen for it. And also, I just want to say one more thing that it doesn't actually matter what approach that you've taken to stop drinking for you to get a grip of this stuff. It doesn't matter if you've done AA, it doesn't matter if you've done willpower, it doesn't matter if you've gone to rehab, therapy, whatever. This concept is still extremely, extremely important to understand. And the conditioning is basically what, if we look at the world, right, and we look at all of these different things that are, that are feeding us messages into our brain, we create a worldview. And this can be the same with anything, right? You, you, right now, let's, let's use an example of the US politics. You probably feel very strongly either way, whether it's for Biden, whether it's for Trump. Either way, you probably feel very strongly. And then you've got to look at the inputs that are going into your brain. You're probably watching certain news channels, depending on which way that you look at things. You're probably uh, listening to certain journalists. You're probably watching a certain, you know, a certain agenda online. You probably have a, a, a you, you've got a worldview. And the thing is, is, is that worldview probably isn't your own. That worldview has probably been implanted from a very early age, from friends, from family members, from the people that you surround yourself with, from the inputs that you've got online, from the media. And that gives you this worldview that this person is right, or this person is wrong, or this person is right, and this person is wrong. So you get the point. And the way that I view politics is, is, a, is a pendulum. And the pendulum is, is a concept from a book called Reality Transurfing. And the goal of the pendulum is to just to attract as much energy as it can. And I just ignore that stuff. I don't really care. But what we've got to see is, is like, that's a great example of, you know, the same thing that is going on with alcohol. These ideas have been implanted for a very, very, very long time, right? And yeah, like I said, it's the conditioning. So we're going to jump in. So the very first thing when it comes to alcohol and the conditioning is the way that alcohol is portrayed in the marketing. So think of any alcohol advertisement, right? Any of them. Are you going to see a, 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 a drunk on the floor with sick dribbling down their mouth? No. Are you going to see the man or the lady that's just beating their partner up? No. Are you going to see the, the, the bruised faces, the knocked out teeth, the, the, the scars in the knuckles from the fighting? Of course not. Are you going to see the kid that smells the alcohol on the adult's breath and says, Mummy, why, why, why are you drinking again? Of course not. You don't see any of that stuff, ever. Unless it's some you know, governmental campaign where they show you know, drink driving, etc. You will never see an alcohol company show what really happens when people drink alcohol. And it's sad. It's absolutely sad. They will only show the powerful, sophisticated lady with a glass of wine, sipping you know, in a beautiful dress, in a beautiful restaurant. Is that really the reality of alcohol? Is that really what happens when you drink alcohol? Do you really become more sophisticated? Do you become more charismatic? Is that really what is happening? Do you become, all of a sudden, if you start drinking bourbon, you now become Jeff Bezos. You now become a, a, a successful businessman that wears a suit. Is that really the reality of what's going on here? It's absolute nonsense. It's BS. Is pure and utter crap. Listen, if alcohol really did what it said in the marketing, then we'd give it to kids in the morning before school. If it made you more courageous, if it made you more confident, you would give your kids alcohol. But the thing is, is the marketing doesn't show you the bad side of alcohol. It doesn't show you the reality of what millions of people are facing, right? There's a very small percentage of people that do drink alcohol. They drink it in tiny amounts, they, and they, have, they just have no downsides. There's still no benefits to those people because alcohol cannot provide you a benefit. There is not a single benefit to drinking alcohol at all. But there are a very small percentage of people that, you know, they'll drink and they will look like the people in the marketing on the outside, right? They will look in a business suit, drinking a whiskey, they will look like they've got everything under control. But is that really the truth of what's going on? Right? We know that it's not. We know that it's not, but we buy into it. We watch this stuff and we think, ah, I knew it. I knew there was something out. Listen, if this guy is drinking it and this guy looks cool and this guy is driving a Ferrari and this person's got a Rolex on and this person's going to a nice restaurant and this person's like really cool and really funny and he's the life and soul of the party and they're drinking, I knew it. I knew there was something in alcohol. And what happens is it almost becomes 
Like we don't think about it ourselves. What we do is we look for confirmation through the marketing. You know, so let's see that. Let's say that we're 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 we've had a really hard day of work, right? I've had this hard day of work, and we're feeling pretty tired. We're feeling pretty lazy. We're feeling pretty, you know, just want to relax. And we we pull out the phone and we look at the news, and there is a Budweiser advert, and there's a beautiful picture of some mountains and an ice cold Budweiser, and it looks really refreshing and relaxing, and we look at that and we think, ah,、oh, yeah, that would be a very refreshing drink. Alcohol does not refresh you at all. It cannot refresh you because it it dehydrates you, right? But we look at the marketing, and what we do is we start to buy into it. We know that alcohol causes this destruction, but if we get if we kept being told that there is no destruction in it, if we kept being told that there is some kind of benefit to drinking it, we start to buy into it. We start to look at it and think, all right. Yeah, all right. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe actually, there is nothing wrong with drinking alcohol. Maybe you know, maybe my own worldview is incorrect. Because how can everybody else be falling it? And 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 you know, it's just impossible. And we buy into just. I'm telling you, it's utter utter crap. You just you need to understand this. You need to look at that marketing objective objectively. You cannot look at that marketing and th- and buy into it. If you buy into it, I'm telling you, it's game over. And I don't care if you've already stopped drinking. If you still look at that marketing and think that marketing is actually telling the truth, if you look at the refreshments and the and the beaches and everybody having a good time, if you are buying into that, I'm telling you, you've got to stop it. I don't care what approach you've taken. If you buy into that stuff, you just can't do it. Because it's lies. It's pure and utter bollocks. Sorry for the language, right? Hopefully, my mum doesn't watch this video. But right, the next thing that we want to look at, right, is the way that it's portrayed in the media. And there's one specific thing that I want to touch on here. It's movies. Actually, there's two things. First is movies, right? So look at the way alcohol is portrayed in a movie. So we watched this movie called Prisoners, and it's on Netflix. It's actually a really good movie, and so I was watching the I was watching the first few opening scenes, and you know I really wanted to discuss this on the channel because I saw this for what it was, right? So you've got this at the beginning, right? The movie gets quite dark, but at the beginning you've got like this happy family. You've got children, you've got parents, everyone's smiling, everybody laughing, and then they're sat on the couch, and they're all drinking wine, and I thought. It's just like, is is that a requirement of relaxation and good times that you must have a glass of poison in your hand? And I looked at it and I thought, like, how many people are watching that, thinking that that's normal behaviour? That is normal to sit down with a glass of poison when your kids are playing and you're and you're you're you know you're showing you're, you you know the, the the characters are really relaxed and the kids are seeing that. And I just thought, why? Why do people buy into this? Why do they look at that and think? That's what I need to relax. I need alcohol to sit down and calm me down. It's sad. It's really, really sad. And the thing is, 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 is from a very young age, we kind of look at these these messages that go into movies. We look at the character that's stressed. We look at the character that's about to do something scary. We look at the character that wants to calm down and relax. We look at the character that wants to go and have fun. And it's not all the time, but a lot of the time, alcohol is used to contribute. To whatever that character wants to deal with, and it doesn't matter if it's like a negative thing that they're dealing with or a positive thing that they're dealing with, alcohol is always there, and this is in thousands of movies, thousands, and it's always there, right? But we never really look at that and think, is that really what a human needs? A human does a human truly need poison in their life? <sighs> Do you know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's just messed up. It's just messed up, and I feel bad because you know if I have children, hopefully they, 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 I can educate them on this stuff and show them what alcohol really is. But you know, there's there's all these children that are growing up now, all of these teenagers. In fact, some of you guys that are watching this probably got you probably got teenage kids. You might have you know kids, young kids that are growing up. And the sad thing is, is that the things that they're watching now, it's it's all being implanted in their brain, just like I was saying about the politics. It's this constant conditioning that's going on again and again and again, and that's pretty painful. It's pretty sad. And the next part, when it comes to the media, is 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 these studies that come up that show that alcohol alcohol drinkers live longer. 
right? And I always feel bad when I see those studies because I always think of the people that have promised themselves that they're going to have a few days off drinking, they're going to take a week off or whatever, and they see those studies and they think, oh, do you know what? I might as well drink. You know, it, it might add some life expectancy on And I think, Jesus, man. Those studies that come up, right? You've got one study that will come up and then you've probably got a 50 that come out that show alcohol for what it is. And then you've got one that somehow surfaces and that was the one that goes everywhere in the media. And I always think, how much destruction is that going to cause? How much good does it cause? I say it causes no good to a single person, right? And I know that's a pretty big statement because most people that read that probably, you know, want to be told that they can drink more. And if they see a, a newspaper from an establishment like the BBC or whatever, and they see this thing that alcohol drinkers live longer or alcohol can help with a, this disease or this condition, guess what? They've now just, it's like any attempt that they had to stop drinking just goes out the window. It's just like, ah, thank God. Somebody has now given me permission to, to do this stupid destructive thing. So the next thing is when it comes to the conditioning, and I'm sorry if this is uncomfortable for you guys to listen to, but you need to understand it. So just keep going. Yep, the people that you love the most, right? Your family and your friends. So what we've got to realize, why do I say family and friends? Well, because if it was just the marketing and if it was just the media, it would be a lot easier for you to, you know, understand that and just not drink, right? It would actually be quite easy. But here's the big problem. It's not just you that sees the marketing in the media. It's not just you, right? You've also got the people closest to you because this is everybody, right? It's not just like a small percentage of the population buy into this stuff. Pretty much everybody buys into it. And what happens is you've got all of these messages that are going into your brain, right? And then you've got your friend and your friend sees alcohol in the exact same way. And your friend then offers you a drink and you're like, no thanks. And then he starts saying all the stuff that you've heard from the marketing, from the media. And then you start to buy into it again, right? What, what, what's basically going on here is you are, you are basically getting told about alcohol from all of these different angles, right? And, you know, you might look at the marketing and go, that's BS. You might look at the media and go, that's BS. But then your friend says, do you want to drink? Then you buy into it, right? And it's like, some people are going to just look at the marketing and buy into it. Some people are going to look at just the media, they're going to buy into it. Some people are going to look at point four and they're just going to buy into it, right? And what is basically happening is, is and this is, why, this is why the willpower method is, is just so ineffective. And it's because if you've got to use willpower against these things, right? It, and, and because it's a constant bombardment from a million different angles. If you're using willpower and for that one moment where you don't have willpower and you, and you look at the marketing straight away, you're like, oh, right, I'll just buy into that. If you're using willpower and you turn the news on and there's that article that says that beer drinkers live longer or whatever it is, you can buy into that. If you're using willpower and it runs down and your, and your, and your husband or your wife or your, even your children or your best friend comes over with a case of beer, you can just buy into that. It becomes so easy because there's so many options for you to buy into it. And it's why the willpower method is just ineffective, right? And... You know, when it's somebody that you love, when it's somebody that you really care about and they're telling you this stuff and you love that person, that becomes difficult. If you don't break the conditioning down, if you don't understand alcohol for what it is, that's going to become a very difficult situation. And it can be hard and it can be hard to face that person because you love that person and you know that that person loves you. And when they're offering you alcohol, you know, and they don't understand this stuff, when they've fully bought into all of these other points and that's like somebody that you love and somebody that you care about and they offer you a drink, it's not easy, you know? It's not easy if you don't understand this stuff. When you understand this stuff, it's pretty easy because you just look at that person and you think, listen, man, you've really got to, you've got to understand this. I don't need to understand why you drink. I don't need to understand your side of the argument. You need to understand my side of the argument. So get on board. And it becomes different. You know, if I, if I had like a very close friend that was drinking and asking me to drink, I wouldn't feel the need to drink. I'd feel the need to tell him that, dude, what the hell are you doing? And that's a big shift in mindset, right? But it can be hard. It can be hard, especially if you buy into the conditioning, right? If, if, if you're using willpower and you decide to kind of ignore these things and then your husband or your partner says, I want to open a bottle of wine, that's difficult. And this is why you've got to understand this stuff. So 
let's move on to point four, right? Point four, and this is the last one, are these so-called normal drinkers. And these normal drinkers, right? These are the people that look like they've got everything under control, right? They look as though their life is going well. They've got them have a successful career. They might have a great relationship. They might be making loads of money. They might be in a great shape, whatever it is, right? And they just have one glass of wine three times a week. And that is it. And then maybe once a month, they drink a little bit more, right? They just, they have, they seem to have everything under control. So let's say at this point, right? Because this was the big one for me. This was the big one. Because, you know, there were times in my life where I just wanted to stop drinking, right? And I, and I knew that alcohol was causing me a shit ton of pain. I, had, I just wanted nothing to do with it anymore. And it was very easy to kind of see that. I didn't buy into the marketing. I didn't buy into the media. I didn't really care about my family and friends. But it was when I saw one of these, I don't want to swear, but one of these people, right? That's when I bought into it, right? So I, I kind of like defeated some of the conditioning, but there was this one area left and it was the normal drinker. And, you know, I've got some friends that drink alcohol and they would be classed as one of these normal drinkers. And, you know, I might have had like a month off, right? I might have not drank for a month. And then I'd see my successful friend that's killing it. He's got loads of money. He's really funny. He's really charismatic. And then we go out and he just has one drink, right? And I know I touched on friends before, but I'm not, I, this is like, these are one of these anomalies, these people that just have one ring. And I would look at him and think, oh, like me and him are quite similar. Like we, we're both the same age, whatever. He can just have one. Oh, why can't I? Game over. Game over. There's no such thing as one drink, especially if you have a drinking problem, right? But the problem, the problem with it was is that I would look at that guy with envy. I would look at that guy and think, damn, I wish I could be like him. I wish I could drink that poison. And what is actually happening by me looking at him and wishing that I could drink is I'm not actually removed the conditioning. I've not removed all of these things because if I still look at alcohol and think that I'm going to drink that and something good's going to happen, is going to give me something, I've not removed the conditioning. I've not fully understood it. I've not fully grasped it. It was this one little area that would just kind of send me into this, this, this frenzy. And I'd look at a person that was a normal drinker and I'd think, why can't I be like them? And these days, I don't feel like that. I don't look at those people and think, I wish I could be like them, right? I just don't do that anymore. I don't feel like that at all. I look at those people and I think, I wish I could show you what I know, right? I wish you'd watch my YouTube videos. You probably won't do, but you know, that's the thing. I don't look at those people anymore and think that they're doing something pleasurable. I look at those people and think, unlucky. Like you have to still live your life drinking poison, even if it's just one glass, even if it's just two glasses. I don't want to do that. I don't even have one ounce of desire to do that. So it's a, it's, you know, that, that's like a, a bit of a deeper topic. I don't really have time to go into that in this video. Uh, that's like something that we, we dive deeper into in like the Sober Clear program. And this is like, this is a very key part of, of, of first principles thinking, right? Understanding the conditioning. And for a lot of you guys, that was probably quite an uncomfortable video because, you know, it, it, it's almost like, it's quite painful to watch that. It's quite painful to understand these things because most people are not willing to look at this objectively. Most people want to stick, they want to stay in that cycle of drinking. They don't want to step above it and look down and go, why am I doing this? Most people do not want to do that. And guys, if you do want to apply for the Sober Clay Coaching Program, that's a step-by-step -step process where we dive deep into topics like this, but we do it in a step-by-step -step system, right? We, we do it from, we start here and we get here. If you want to apply for the actual program, if you want to learn a little bit more about how that works, I'll leave a link in the description There'll be two things. Number one is you can go and apply straight for the coaching program. And the second thing that you'll be able to do is to be able to watch a video talking about first principles thinking and how exactly all of that stuff works and how we use a mental model, just like we've done now, how we break things down to its component parts and we rebuild it from the ground up. I'm going to leave you to a link for the first principles video. Guys, make sure to hit subscribe. And if you want to learn more about the four truths of stopping drinking and also the four stages of stopping drinking, then click the videos on the screen now.